But look what else it says. Verse 23, the city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives its light. His lamb is its lamb. God gives us a description here about heaven, but as we talk Wednesday night, and I think, Joe, you were the one that brought it up, there is no way, and I said I have a pea brain, there's no way this pea brain can ever understand what heaven is going to be like. So we already know there's no sun or moon because of what? The glory of God. The light. You know when people pass away, or begin in the process of passing away, you know what they always see? A light. A light. As God begins showing them heaven, they begin seeing a light. And it says here that there is going to be light in heaven. There is no darkness. And in verse 24, the nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night. Then they look at verse 27. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who, is what is, who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ this morning, your name is in the Lamb's book of life. Y'all with me? If something were to happen to you right now, you were to fall over, and when we checked, you didn't have a pulse. We called 911, but it was too late. The Bible says here that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Guess where you're going to be? You're going to open your eyes, and there's Jesus. And he says, come in, thou good and faithful servant. Let me show you what I've done for you. Let me show you what I have for you. What a glorious day that's going to be, amen? And the Bible says there's no crying in heaven. There's no tears. There's no hurting. There's no illness. We just get to go with Jesus. We get to go with Jesus. As he washes through the golden, the golden streets. That should give you comfort this morning, my friends. Does it? Gives you comfort. Let's go back to John chapter 14. Verse 2. In my Father's houses, house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. So Jesus tells us here in verse 2 through verse 4 that he's gone and he's preparing a place for you. How many of your Bibles say he's preparing a mansion? I like a mansion, don't you? I want my own mansion. I've lived in a small house my whole life. I want a mansion. And I want it on the hillside. That's okay to say that, isn't it? Yeah, nice you. little spring going through the yard. I want the grass that you can roll in where you don't get grass stained and it's real soft. Lord, I put my order in now. <laughs> he is building us a mansion. And guess what? You don't have to share it with anybody. That's yours. That's your mansion. What a great day it's going to be. And then he says, I'm going somewhere to build this for you. And since I'm going to build it for you, what am I going to do? I'm going to come back, and I'm going to get you, and I'm going to take you home. Can you feel the disciples now getting a little more excited? Well, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Some of us in here will never experience the rapture. The rapture is when Christ sounds the trumpet. And the Bible says those who are dead in Christ, those who have already died, their bodies will be taken to heaven, <coughs> even though the soul is already there. And we who are left will be caught up in the sky with the Lord. So if the Lord comes back 
in the next 30 seconds, and you see this Bible drop right there. And I'm not here, but you're still sitting in the pew. Not good. Not good. Jesus Christ came to this earth and died on the old rugged cross so that you can accept him and you can have eternal life through Jesus Christ your Lord. John 3, 16 and 17 said that Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but to save them and bring them unto himself. So you've got to be sure, people. You've got to be sure that when the Lord comes or you take your last breath, that you know where you're going. You've got to know. You can't vote. It's not because your name is on the church membership roll. Because that's not what the Lord looks at. It's not that you're a good person. You try to do good to everybody. That is Satan's lie to the rest of the world. If you're a good person, you'll get in. No, what does Jesus say? He said, I am the only way to the Father. I am the only way. Okay, look at verses 5 through 6 of John 14. And Thomas said to him, Lord... We don't know where you are going, or how can we know the way? How many of you are like Thomas? Been with Christ the whole time, a couple years. Christ has talked about heaven, he's talked about everything. And there's always one in the group that says, What? I, I'm sorry, I don't know where you're going. So how do I know where to get there? It doesn't say if the other disciples said anything or not, but I'm sure there's someone who like, he wasn't listening. He must not have been listening. But Jesus addressed him because he did not understand what he was talking about. Look what Jesus says. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. He said, I am the way. He is the only way to salvation. He is the only way to eternal life. I am the way. Then he said, I am the truth. The scriptures this morning, as we read them, are the truth. Where Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled, that's the truth. Where John 3.16 said, if you come to me and accept me, I will give you eternal life, that is the truth. All right? It's the truth. And then he says here, I am the life. Let me share something with you from my heart this morning. I accepted the Lord when I was about six years old. <coughs> Grew up in a Christian home. Was in church every Sunday. And I accepted the Lord. As a little child. I didn't understand everything about the Bible. But I knew that Jesus loved me because I sang it a lot of times. And I wanted to be sure that I was going to be with Him forever and ever. I didn't understand about death at six or seven years old. I didn't understand about heaven. But I did know that Jesus loved me. When I was 12, 13 years old in our youth group, there was a boy in the youth group who was two years older than I was. And I was just happy about Jesus. And you know what he told me? He said, I don't believe in God. He said, I am an atheist. Well, at 12 years old, I never heard that word before. I've been around church folks my whole life. He put enough doubt into my heart that then I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure that there was even a God. I wasn't sure that Christ loved me. I wasn't sure that there was a Christ. Because I've never heard someone speak like that before. He's very intelligent. And I began doubting my salvation and doubting that there was a God. You know what happened in my life? I quit living. I became very, very distraught. And I know Shirley probably doesn't remember this. But I would lay awake at night as a 12, 13-year-old young boy, afraid that I was going to die because I didn't know what was going to happen. My mom and dad came in one night. I was in there crying to myself. And I remember dad said, maybe we need to get you some professional help. They didn't know what to do with me. I wasn't going to tell them that I didn't. I didn't know that there was a God or didn't believe in it. I just
just didn't know. He didn't tell that to my parents. They were God-fearing, Bible-believing, praying people. And I struggled with that. When Jesus says here that I am the life, that's a joyful life, and I quit living. It went like that for about a year and a half. I was distraught. I was depressed. I went to a revival service one night, and that's why I like having revival services. I sat there and listened to somebody I'd never heard before. It wasn't the same preacher I'd heard every Sunday who I wasn't sure he was telling me the truth or not. I'm bearing my soul to you this morning, okay? Let me tell you the way it is. And at the very end, the minister, I'll never forget, he started doing this. He said, that's your heart. He said, if you don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and it stops, and you'll be going to hell forever and forever. And I tell you what, about it, I started shaking. The Lord impressed on me at that moment that I need to turn back to Him and get my life right. And when the music started during the invitation time, I was the first one out, and I ran to the front because I was tired of not living. You understand what I'm saying? And I took that bandage by the hand. I said, I need Christ. I want to be sure. And we prayed together. And from that moment on, when I was 12 years old, I've never looked back. I've never looked back. And I know who my Redeemer is. I know who my Savior is. If you can have that same assurance today. Because it's not good if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior. Turn to Revelation chapter 20. This is the last passage. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 20. Verse 11. <coughs> That if you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're not going to be here. You're bought by the blood. Jesus said, when you die, you're going to heaven. This is for the unbelievers. If you're out here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you haven't yet, this is what you've got to look forward to. I'm just going to lay it on the line, okay? I'm just going to preach straight from the Word this morning. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. Earth and sky fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead. These are the, these are the people who have died and haven't accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. And the sea gave up the dead that were in it. And death and Hades gave up the dead that was in them. And each person was judged according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. And look at this. Anyone's name was not found written in the book of life. He was thrown into the what? The lake of fire. You don't have Christ in your heart this morning. And you don't accept them as Lord and Savior and something happens to you, you will be present in front of God Himself, that great white throne. And you will stand there, and the Bible says that you will come up and you will look at Him and say, My name is Bill West. Of course, not real Bill West because I'm saved. The Bible says that He'll look at it. WWW. They say, depart from me, I don't know who you are. And the Bible says, but the people will say, but you know me. I'm a church member. I do good to everybody. He says, take them away, or they'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth forever and forever. Can you imagine being in that line?